Hey, what is going on guys? Expertfusion here and today I'm going to be starting a brand new thing I'm going to do with every Walking Dead episode starting with 910 of course and I'm going to do it as the new episodes come out after I do my first impressions review which is going to come out probably like the day of or the day after the episode sometimes reaction video like my live reaction sometimes for like the finales for the special episodes the ones that I expect to be really really insane and and shocking I'm only going to record reactions for those episodes but you know every other episode is just going to be a first impressions review and then I'm going to do for every one of these episodes kind of like a breakdown where I'm going to go in depth throughout the episode give it a rating give it a um, good understanding of what actually happened in the episode and then kind of after I've already watched it a few times because I have this episode at least, and then I'm going to give kind of like um, little things here and there, like the best Walker kill of the episode or the best character of the episode, a review of the soundtrack, how well was the sound in this episode, the music, you know, stuff like that, and kind of give an overall analysis of what happened and you know, what's going on throughout the season and in terms of this episode, how does it play for the rest of the season, how is it important for the rest of the season. So let's get into it. Season 9, episode 10 of The Walking Dead was titled Omega, written by Channing Powell and directed by David Boyd. I would like to give this episode a rating of 8.6 out of 10 stars. That's how the rating's going to be. It's going to be out of 10. Now, to put that in perspective of what I believe you know, ratings are in terms of other episodes... I would never give a Walking Dead episode lower than like five stars because I think every episode at least, and this is not me being some biased fanboy, I generally, genuinely believe that The Walking Dead's episodes all deserve at least more than five stars. I think the least I would give an episode is probably Slab Town. I would give it like a 5.4 out of 10, something like that. And the best I would ever give an episode is probably like Too Far Gone with a 9.9 out of 10. I would never give an episode 10 out of 10 because in my opinion, nothing is perfect. No movie, no show, no episode is ever going to be perfect. That's not possible. So I'll give it a 9.9. I give a lot of episodes 9.9 out of 10 stars. But this one, I'd give an 8.6 out of 10 stars. This episode served as development for a couple different characters and a couple different storylines. First things first, Lydia. Lydia was the biggest developed character in this episode easily they had the backstories with alpha and as much as i was expecting it to be more of a backstory to the whispers it felt like more of a backstory to alpha but it really wasn't it was more of a backstory to lydia if anything because it was how alpha's you know manipulation and abuse affected lydia and how it kind of serves as her character makes us understand and kind of care for her a little bit, even though a lot of the fan base is not very too accepting of Lydia, especially the non-comic book readers, more than anything. Then, of course, we get development between Daryl and Lydia, and between Daryl and Henry, and between Henry and kind of Lydia. So it's kind of like a, a, a triangle of characters who are all kind of feeding off of each other in terms of development, because they all have ties back to domestic abuse you have daryl of course who was actually abused by his father and we know that through different parts in the story in season three episode 10 we even see the scars on the back of daryl he's had scars for a while and then now he has even more scars which we don't know what those more scars are from but we'll obviously find out as time goes on then you have henry who obviously hurt his adopted mother or, you know his mother who adopted him uh, had a series of domestic abuse problems in the past and we learn of carol's hair and why she cut it short which was such a well done symbolic story for carol as to why she grew out her hair it makes a lot of sense and if ezekiel ever decides to be killed off in some way shape or form in the future i think maybe carol will cut her hair short again kind of sim symbolic towards the fact that she's not safe anymore because she doesn't have her hubby i don't know but um, then we have Lydia, of course, who was abused by her mother. Now, I found her memories to be very interesting. Memories can work like this in a lot of different strange ways where you remember certain things but not everything. You remember certain images and certain sounds and certain smells, but you don't remember 
exactly what happened. You remember little images here and there, and you can piece together that something happened, but you don't know exactly who it happened to or where it happened. And Alpha has been telling Lydia these lies about the fact that it was her father who was the abusive one, and it was the mother who was this sweet lady who's singing to her, being all nice and kind, when in reality she started to remember as the episode went on because she started recalling these memories, which she probably hasn't really talked about them or said anything about them in a long time. And the fact that she brought it up brought back memories, and she started remembering little bits and pieces here that the story that her mother has been telling her was false. And the baby crying completely just threw it at into her memory because she probably hasn't heard a baby cry until that moment. I'm sure she hasn't heard a baby cry for a long time. So maybe the baby crying reminded her of the past and just brought up the sound, which brought up all the different memories that her mother was actually an abusive person. And that's why when she was about to kill, not kill, but she's about to injure Henry with the hammer. And I know she was about to injure him, not kill him, because she asked about the doctor. She made sure after he said they have a doctor, she was like, oh, you have a doctor just to make sure that he would be okay because she doesn't want to hurt him. She doesn't want to kill him. She just wants to injure him so she can get out. But after hearing the baby cry, she realized, shit, my mother is really an abusive person. I can't go out there with her anymore. I need to stay somewhere that's safe. So I found that to be very, very, very interesting and very touching too, especially when Daryl was talking to her about it and making sure she was okay because Daryl was being kind of rough last episode, but after hearing about the stories through you know Henry talking to her he sort of realized more and more about what she's about and how what kind of a person she is and that she's really not a threat but we still can't just let her out you know because she could be a threat if she really wanted to so that was interesting I want to talk about Alpha now so Alpha is really interesting because if you didn't notice her whole backstory and the, all the, the flashback scenes, she said a lot of things that really make sense for the whole Whisperer arc. So first of all, when the guy would not shut up and kept trying to get outside to the walkers, she kept saying, shut up, shut up. And then she kept putting her you know, finger over her mouth, t- you know, telling him to shush, be quiet, and that your stupidity is going to get us all killed. And that loud people just can't exist anymore because they're going to die like this. So... That obviously is very reminiscent to the whispers and how they act. They stay very quiet. They don't yell. They they whisper so the dead don't hear them, stuff like that. That is so interesting. And the fact that she would put her finger over her mouth, even when she was killing her husband, Frank, right in front of Lydia with a knife, just shows how sadistic she is. Now, the fact that the parallels they're kind of showing between Alpha and Carol proves that Alpha and Carol are going to have a, a clash by the end of the season, 100%. There's no way they won't do that, especially because of just the way they were building up and kind of paralleling their stories. You know, both of them cut their hair short, but obviously for different reasons. The other piece of development that we got in this episode, which was definitely the least interesting portions of this episode, not to say it wasn't good at all, but that was, of course, Terra and Magna's group. That was basically the only two groups that were being developed, you know, Magna's group as well as uh, Henry... Lydia and Daryl, but that's kind of the whole point of the episode. It was really trying to hone in this whole whisper arc and kind of introduce who these people are and what kind of a threat they're going to pose in the future. So in terms of their group, we kind of learned a lot more about their how close they are with each other because they really wanted to go out and find Luke, like even at the dead of night, which was probably a bad idea. I agree, but I think it's understandable for their characters to want to do something like that, even though it's probably the most risky thing they're going to do. But Luke, you know, he's out there. There's something they need to find. He's, they want to make sure he's OK, even if Tara wants to wait. Sometimes you just can't wait because sometimes plans don't work. Sometimes you can't trust people with plans. That's why in season eight, you had a lot of people breaking the plans and doing their own thing, like Daryl, who just decided to go in and rush and destroy you know, the wall so the walkers would all flood in. But it's understandable because some people just don't agree with plans. And when you don't agree with plans, you sometimes act on your own. Now, is it smart? Probably not. But it works in this case. And you had, of course, Kelly, who broke down crying because... You know, she, we kind of learned that she was saved by Luke in the past, and that kind of forced her to be like, okay, we have to do this. We can't just, you know, not go look, keep looking for her. And I found that to be very interesting. Now, is it dangerous? Yeah, let's leave a deaf girl and a and her sister out in the woods by herself. Yeah, that's a great idea. But I'm not trying to, you know, harsh on their 
choices, but it probably wasn't the best decision making by them. But bad decisions does not equal bad writing. Tons of characters make bad decisions all the time. It's part of life. Last thing I want to talk about is the relationship between Henry and Lydia, and not in terms of the domestic part that I was talking about before, but just the actual romantic relationship that kind of happened in the comics, or did happen in the comics with Carl and Lydia, but is kind of happening now with Henry and Lydia. Personally, this is kind of a negative. I think we should have gotten more development between the two, maybe in terms of dialogue. Maybe this episode should have been a little longer, and we should have gotten a little more dialogue between Henry and Lydia before Henry decided to say he likes her and he's want to bring her around the community because people were just bashing him like crazy, saying he's stupid, what an idiot. But if we saw more of their conversations, because they talked a lot probably between episode 9 and 10, a lot of stuff that we didn't hear. So they could have bonded a lot more than what, you know what we saw so that could have forced him to kind of have a different feeling about her than what we actually saw within the episode so i think that would have been definitely beneficial if they showed more of that but since i'm a comic book reader i know what happens i know you know that she's not really a threat and that's not something that we should really be bashing henry for even though it's probably not the smartest thing but thankfully she didn't do anything because she remembered that her mother is this horrible horrible person and she needs to go back into that cell because it's the only place she's going to be safe. Yes, she tried to attack Daryl a few times. Yes, she was going to attack Henry. But um, Lydia is just such an interesting character from the comics. And I'm very happy to see her on screen. And I'm very happy to have these wonderful actresses, um, or this wonderful actress portray Lydia. And this wonderful, just the acting in this episode was really good, honestly. That's one of my favorite parts of this episode. I thought Samantha Moore and his alpha did a great job. Norman Reedus, as always, doing a great job. Matthew Lentz as Henry did a great job. I, I like him better than Chandler. I'm going to be honest. I think he's a lot better than Carl in terms of acting. In terms of character, I don't really know yet. We haven't seen that much of Henry other than a few episodes. And then, obviously, in the past, we saw a decent amount of him. But that was his younger self. But I think in time, people will like to look like, well, people start liking Henry more. Um, Especially in terms of, I, people just say they like Carl more just because Scott Gimble killed him off. So obviously they're going to just bash whatever the hell Scott Gimble does because white male bad, I guess, you know, whatever. Um, now I want to mention some symbolism or kind of um, parallels that were being, because the walking into this all the time. They do it a lot. First things first, I want to talk about day 23. That was the day that this flashback started on. The importance of that actually is the fact that, well, first of all, it was the first episode we saw Rick in. You know, season one, episode one, day 23 is where it started. Now, obviously, the days could have been a little different depending on where you are in the world because certain places could have started a little faster, could have went on a little slower. You know, it really just depends as to when the outbreak officially started for certain groups. But in terms of this is what came from the directors and the producers themselves. They said this. Day 23 was when Rick woke up in the uh, the coma and... Day 23 was also the first episode of Season 2 of Fear the Walking Dead when they got on the boat. That was Day 23. So that's really interesting to know. That's just some kind of symbolism behind Day 23. Also, a parallel I thought was really interesting that I did not see any people notice was Lydia. She said the word, the, the phrase, it's their world, we have to live in it, referring to the walkers. That's why they walk in the dead because it's their world, we have to live in it. Enid said the same thing in Season 6, Episode 8 to Glenn. Or it might have been Episode 7, one of those episodes. She said the same thing to Glenn. She said, it's their world. We're just living in it. Because she was at a really bad point in her life where she did not give a shit about anything. And Glenn kind of brought her back to reality. Now, I find that interesting because, you know, Enid and Lydia are obviously two characters that are kind of love bugs to, well, obviously you got... Had Enid, which was a love bug to Carl, and then you got Lydia, who's going to be a love bug to Henry. So I found that interesting. It was kind of like a parallel between the two uh, teenage girls, who obviously Enid's a lot older now in terms of the story. So I thought that was a cool sort of parallel. And then obviously you had the stuff with the hair, Carol's hair, that was very symbolic, and I find that to be very awesome and interesting. And then let's, let's go over the fun part of the video. I'm going to do this every week because I thought it'd be kind of cool. The best walker kill of the episode. This episode didn't have that many walker kills. It had only a couple. But I think the best one would be the throwing knife that Magna threw in the walker's head. That was kind of dope. Um, I don't know. I found it to be really cool. But that was one of the only really walker kills we had in the episode. There wasn't that many. So still really dope. Now let's get into the last portion of the 
review, which is going to be reviewing the soundtrack in the episode. How well was the soundtrack? Because little, you know, people don't really understand this, but soundtracks and music is such an important part to Walking Dead episodes. It is so important. If without a good soundtrack, you don't have anything. Just take any Walking Dead episode, take any movie, take any show, and remove all the music and any soundtrack and any, you know, score. It completely takes away the tone, and it completely makes it a different thing. Now, some scenes and some shows are better off with not having any music. Sometimes they're more tense. Sometimes they're better. But then there's also times where if you don't have music, it's it's awful, and it's not nearly as amazing as it is with the music. This episode did a great job at using the Whisperer theme, which we all know the Whisperer theme by now. They started using it in Episode 8 of Season 9, and they've been kind of using it every time the Whisperers show up. And during the Lydia flashbacks, they kind of had a different version of it, but it was more of a lullaby version. It kind of sounded like Lydia's theme, which I like when characters have theme songs. I loved how Carol, uh, Carl had his own theme song, Morgan had his own theme song. All these characters have like these kind of theme songs that every time they have something important going on with them, they kind of have that theme song play. Or every now and then, when they have something important, they have their theme song play. Same thing with like what movies do, what the Avengers does, what the MCU does. They always do this. They have their, you know, characters have specific sort of themes and soundtracks that play when their characters are present. And Lydia kind of has her own, and every time she's talking about the whispers, it also kind of plays throughout. It's very ominous, it's very freaky and creepy, and I love it. I love it so much. Soundtrack in this episode was very well done. Very well done. One of the best episodes for soundtracks, in my opinion. They got a couple of good pieces in there. I'm going to play them just to end the video off. I'm going to play them, the sound in the background of the soundtracks. Um, if you guys want to listen to it, pretty good. Obviously, you're gonna have you know the sound along with it. I'm not. I don't really have the ability to do that. But when Be Claimed comes out with these soundtracks, be sure to check them out because if you guys don't know, Be Claimed, he kind of breaks down the soundtrack and pieces it out. So he takes out all the you know the sounds, the dialogue, and all that, and kind of leaves in the, the, the score so you can listen to the soundtrack without all the background sounds. So check him out when he uploads it. Obviously, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the programs and softwares that he has to do that. But he usually takes a while to actually do it. So expect it in probably a few months, honestly. But, you know, it probably takes him a while in terms of the program. It makes sense. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the in-depth breakdown of The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 10, which is titled Omega. Very excited for next week. Predictions. Maybe I'll do predictions. I'm not too sure. Let me know if you guys want to see them or not. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.